Hello and welcome to Open Microtomy. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down my four-step process on joke writing. Stick around. What's up guys? I am Matt Lamb and I'm with Open Microtomy bringing to you my four-step joke writing process. Hopefully you've watched a few of my other videos and thank you for that. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't and go check some of those out maybe before you watch this one. This one is going to be more toward the joke writing side and less toward the open mic performance side. And if, honestly, you're gonna get way more out of open mic performance than you are joke writing as a beginner. So go ahead and watch my other videos and come back to this one if you haven't watched those already because this is going to be a little bit, not necessarily more in depth, but again, joke writing to me is less important than getting comfortable on stage which is what I focused on before in my previous videos. All right, for those of you sticking around, I'm gonna be breaking down my four step process. Four steps is kind of a weird number. I know it's not three or five, but we're used to like odd numbers of steps for some reason. I know like normally I think, oh, it's the top three, it's the top five. Normally four is kind of a weird thing, but four was what I came up with when I just realized, oh, this is how I'm breaking it down. This just seems to be the best way that works for me. So step number one is the writing process. You can't tell a joke if you haven't written a joke. Pretty obvious, right? So when it comes to the four step process, that's where you need to start. You need to be writing your joke. I know that my personal way to start a joke is I just kind of do a lot of word association. So if I, if I know that I need to be writing material and I'm just focusing on writing anything, when it comes to writing material, I don't really have a starting point or an end point or a specific goal that I'm going toward most times. Honestly, I, I really, I, I find a weird theme and I'll start to maybe build jokes around it. But I'm, when you're first starting out, you just kind of need a few handful of jokes and they don't really need to be tied. Honestly, if you're not putting together entire sets and you're just doing open mics, you just need a few jokes. You, you need a few good jokes. The best way to start a good joke, in my opinion, word association helps me a lot. So yeah, take a look around in my room. Right now I see a fan. Okay, what is what else is, you know, what can I do with the word fan? Okay, you know, baseball fans, ceiling fans. All right, okay, uh, the glass ceiling, because I said ceiling fan. You know, you just, you start spiraling and you think like, where am I going, where am I going? And then eventually, at least in my case, I'll hook onto a word and then I'll start writing a joke based around literally a word or a key phrase and I'll move on to the next subject. It's not the greatest advice, but again, this is my four step process. This isn't how to write a joke. This is my four step process of joke writing. So now that I've got my joke put together, I, you know, I went from saying ceiling fan to having a joke. I know, pretty quick. But once I get my joke, even if, again, it doesn't even have to be good. I just, I have a joke. I have something funny to me that I think I'm gonna say. And I think, okay, got my joke, ready to go. Where do I go from there? Step number two is telling your joke. We're going from writing a joke to telling a joke that quickly. 100%. You need to stop worrying about your first draft. I'm something of a perfectionist. If my joke wasn't going right right away, I had the terrible habit of just completely canning it. It's not worth anything. If it's, if it's not funny the first time, it's never gonna be funny. I'm not gonna tell it. No. That is what the telling stage of my four step process is actually for. We've covered the writing. We've gotten that part done. We've got our joke that we wanna go tell on stage. We've got our baby. We're gonna show it to the world. And what the world does is up to them. That they're either going to like our baby or they're going to dislike our baby. And that's how we determine whether or not we need to go on to step three. However, remember, this step is not just one and done. Telling your joke isn't just, oh, it failed the first time, now I need to immediately go to step three. Tell your joke a few times, bring it to a few different open mics, bring it to a few different crowds. And if it still isn't working as is, then we go to step three. To be fair, even if it is working, we're gonna go to step three anyway, but wait until you have enough feedback before you go on to step number three. That is the point of this joke writing step, is if you just tell it once, you're not going to get enough feedback to know whether or not it's actually succeeding or failing. And even if it is, either way, like if it kills the first time you tell it and you think, oh, I'm just gonna keep this joke and it's, it's good to go, don't need to do anything else, and then you go tell it somewhere else and it gets nothing, you're just, ooh, ooh, oh no, now you're off guard. My joke isn't working, that was working before, I wasn't expecting this. Tell your joke as many times as you can before you really think, okay, now it's time to move on to the next step. Well, what's the next step, Matt? Step number three, editing. 
This is what I was talking about with step three. And you're probably thinking like, you, you keep mentioning step three before you even talk about it. Well, you kind of have to. So step three, I think you probably could have guessed is you can move on, you've told your joke after you've written it, you, you're already, you're, you're moving your way along. You got your baby, somebody kicked your baby in the face. Now you gotta do some reconstructive surgery on your baby's face. This is a weird metaphor that I've decided to go with, but we're sticking with it, I guess. So, you've got your joke, you've told it a few times, it's well written, but now you're at the point where, did your joke succeed or did your joke fail? That's what you need to be looking into in this third step. If your joke is working, how do you make it better? A joke is never done, by the way. I don't remember, that's not my sentence, I'm not gonna take credit for that. That is, I can't remember exactly who said it. I don't know if there is anybody that's completely attributed to saying that sentence, but a joke is never done, ever. It can be polished, but it's never. there's always something new. When you're working on this editing stage, think about that. Because even if you have a successful joke, there's still going to be tweaks. But in the chance that your joke did not succeed, this is where the editing stage comes in. You think, okay, where did my joke go wrong? Did, like, did I get any reaction from it? Is there any part of that joke that people seem to enjoy and then the other parts fell off? Let's say, let's say you have a joke where, you know, it's a story joke, not my, not my particular cup of tea, but they're usually easier to edit than a one-liner. If a one-liner doesn't work, you just go, ooh, I've got my theme, I've got my thing, but like maybe the wording is different, but a story, so there's a lot more to work with. So I'm gonna use that story as an example. So you got your story, every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Pretty, it seems pretty obvious, but you know, you never know. So. Was it the beginning of the joke that didn't do well? Was it the middle of the joke that didn't do well? Was it the end of the joke that didn't do well? Was it somewhere in between some of those steps? Was it between the middle and the beginning and somewhere along the lines, you lost the thread? Or was it right at the end where the punchline is supposed to go? Is that, where, is that where it went off? You need to think about these things. Maybe I should have put out my how to write a story joke before I put out this video, but I'll put that out eventually. I'll teach y'all how to write a story joke. I just did, I wanted, I wanted to break down more of the process before I actually got into the meat and potatoes of joke writing. So we're at the editing stage. Now what? Okay, we're done with the editing stage. Well, guess what? We're actually going to go back to step two. What? What do you mean we're going back to step two? You gotta tell your joke again. You can't go on, you can't edit a joke and then be like, now it's done. No, you go back to step two. You keep telling that joke. You tell your edited joke, and if it starts to work, then maybe we can get on to step four, you know, the mythological step four in this weird video that I'm doing. But step two is kind of gonna be the big piece, and step one and two can kind of be mixed together, because obviously editing and writing have a lot in common, but I guess that'd be step three and one. Hey, guess what? I'm a comedian. I don't do math or numbers. So we're back at step two. Starting to tell the joke, and it's really starting to kick now. Like, oh, like now, now people are really starting to like it. Now people are, you know, I'm getting pretty consistent laughs. Now, you can either go to step three, keep on editing it, keep going back to step two, keep working on it, or now we skip forward into step four. Step four is where you take that joke and you put it neatly into your set. A joke doesn't just exists in a void. It has to make sense as to where it is. A lot of my jokes are very thematic. Uh, I joke about being gay pretty frequently. It's kind of one of my things because I'm a gay person. I, have, I talk about it. I'm not, I'm not making gay jokes. I'm making jokes as a gay man. So I talk about different parts of my life as a gay man. So I string together a bunch of different jokes that are thematically related. So if I'm going to be talking about a bad date at the beginning of the night, and then at the end of the night, talk about how I can't get dates. People are gonna be like, but wait, you just said earlier that you went on a date. I mean, honestly, if you say it earlier that you you can't get dates and then also go on a date, that's not gonna make sense. Again, that's just a free tip. Make your, make your story make sense. Even if you're a one-liner comic, you're still telling a story. Unless, you know, you're just telling disjointed, you know, stuff, which it works, but I'm not gonna tell you how to make your jokes. I'm gonna tell you what I think works, and if it doesn't, watch somebody else's stuff. But watch mine first and give me that subscription money. <laughs> this went off the rails. Oh, fuck. Oh my god. So, we're in step four. We're, we're, we're putting our joke in line with one another. That's 
Not necessarily the most important part. Obviously, one, two, and three are gonna be more important than step number four, but you can't neglect step number four. If, if your joke is quote unquote done, you still need to know where it goes. You can't just have random inter, you know, interthreaded thoughts. Well, well interthreaded would actually be good. Listen, I'm doing my best to think of words on the spot. You can't just have disjointed there. See how much better I can think when I say the right word? <laughs> you can't have disjointed jokes. It makes things really confusing. You also can't have jokes that, you know, as I mentioned earlier, can't have them contradict another. They need to fit in place with one another so that you can go from point A to point B, point A being the beginning of your set, point B being the end of your set, or, you know, there can be a bunch of different points along the way. Point A can be the beginning, point B can be the middle, point C can be the end. There could be A, B, C, D, E, F. Just work with me. We've gotten through one, two, three, and four. Hopefully this has helped you. I have no idea if it's actually going to, but this is my personal process as far as the joke writing goes. This isn't my how to write a specific type of joke. This is the most broad way that I can bring to you of how to make nothing turn into a joke. Obviously the beginning part is going to be the most difficult part. Trying to figure out how to write a joke is more difficult than the joke writing process as a whole. That's why I wanted to cover the broad spectrum of writing jokes versus the hard details. Because it's easier to look at things as an umbrella and then slowly dial in as we go. I'm not trying to overwhelm anybody right away. I want my pieces to fit into place as I've talked about. Fitting into place and having the pieces that you need along the way is extremely important. Hopefully this has helped you guys out and if it has, please like and subscribe and ring that bell. It'll really help me out a lot. I really want to be able to reach a larger amount of people because stand-up comedy is harsh and I wish that there, I wish that there was more people that were able and willing to do it. I've had so many people tell me, oh, I could never do it. And you definitely maybe can. <laughs> I don't know. If, it's, if you don't like public speaking, it's probably not for you. If you're shy and reserved and you don't want to go on stage and you don't like talking to people, it's probably not for you. So you're probably not watching my videos anyway. But if it, if it is something that you want to do, you can do it. I don't care. Do whatever you want to do with your life. If you want to tell jokes and you're super shy, hate the stage, put some sunglasses on. Look, look away from people. Don't acknowledge the crowd. Do your own thing. Figure your own thing out. But by God, I just want to help people do it. Santa Comedy means a lot to me, and I hope it eventually means a lot to you. So thank y'all for watching. I'm Matt Lamb with Open Microtomy.